We, I, I'm the uh, CEO and founder of a company called Project Line Services. Been around for about a decade. We're a marketing consulting agency. And about a year and a half ago, we launched a secondary brand uh, that is a division of that organization called Yesler, which is more of a traditional agency model that's designed more for, uh, it, it's hard to quantify a specific market. We deal with mid-market and enterprise organizations, but it's really, I equate it to catering versus restaurant, right? Like a lot of our traditional clients in the project line side want what they want. They want to consume the menu they want for the audience they have at that particular time. And the Yesler model is really around taking what we know and do best and deliver that menu and prescriptive guidance back to our clients and tell them how to be the best content marketers uh, uh, in the world. Uh, that's, our, that's our aspiration. So we really hang our hat on content marketing in the B2B space. And what I want to talk to you about tonight is buyer personas. Um, it's the concept of getting to know your buyers better. There's a little bit of a very subtle distinction that our director of marketing will, would go into about your buyers versus your customers. We had a great discussion about that. Your customers have already bought, right? They like you, they know you, hopefully. Your buyers have not purchased from you yet. So you have to understand why are they thinking about buying something from you? Now your customers are an important part of the process to get into that psychology, but the buyers are still in the middle of it. So getting to know your buyers is really, really important. So we're gonna talk a little bit about why you need buyer personas, how they help your business, uh, the definition of them as we see it, um, and for you tonight, really simple ways to think about how you can create them and how you're gonna use them, all right? We start everything with our framework and everything within the B2B marketing world we feel fits in this space. In fact, a lot of the things you're hearing tonight, I'm listening to them like, I know where that goes, I know where that goes, I know where that goes. So buyer personas fit right at the top, the very beginning, research and strategy. Know who you are talking to and figure out what you're going to do with that information as you go to market. And in the B2B space, everything, everybody's leading towards content, content, content. We're huge believers in that as well. So content marketing. Now, content in and of itself, it's fantastic, but you can't just produce stuff. You have to know what people want to hear from you, right? We, we use an acronym, uh, an acronym called REAL, REAL content. It stands for relevant, engaging, actionable, and lively. That means people actually, it means something to them and they enjoy consuming what you have to say. Um, that leads to what more and more B2B marketers are utilizing in marketing automation platforms to start measuring and evaluating what it is you're delivering, um, nurturing your leads, utilizing various marketing vehicles and seeing what the hell's going on as you're moving them through the funnel. That empowers your sales team and sales enablement so that when they get the leads, they know why are they here? What were they interested in? What's making them think about buying our product and how can I close this sale that much better than if you just told me this person at this company wanted some info, right? What exactly are they interested in and how are you nurturing that through the process? And that leads to the customer engagement piece, right? Customer engagement. After you sell them something, you don't go away, right? Customers stay involved and you want them to stay involved. Maybe they're gonna buy the next product, maybe they're gonna expand, maybe they're gonna do the next iteration or the next release of your product. And most importantly, what they like and don't like about you can help you understand how to become better. And you can use those customer stories as was referenced by both the previous speakers, right? As to, to augment part of your content strategy. And ultimately the marketing analytics sits at the bottom and it collects all of that information. You're, you're watching it, you're monitoring it, you're managing it, and you're trying to figure out why things are working, what people are consuming, what they're interested in, and where is this valuable to your business. But it starts at the very top, and that's what we're gonna talk about tonight from buyer personas. So, these are some of the voices out there, right? General information, statistics, what's going on, what are people consuming? The reality behind this information is that B2B buyers are becoming more and more self-serve pre-sale agents, right? They are searching. They know who you are. They know what your product does. They're judging you. They're evaluating your competitors in the same way. So it's really important to understand how you appear to them, right? And if you wanna appear to them in the right way, you have to know who they are and what makes them work and what makes them think the way they do and what's gonna make them buy your solution, 
right? So, like I said, everything in, in here is just basically backing that assertion. Everybody's leading in that direction. Consumers are more empowered. So what's a buyer persona? Uh, we have a definition, it's a composite picture of the real people who buy or might be interested or consume your products, right? It's not an, it's, it's important to identify, I think, what it is not. A buyer persona is not demographics. A buyer persona is not a job title. A director of marketing in one business and a director of marketing in another business might have totally different responsibilities. They may have totally different accountability in their organization. Um, however, there are individuals within a marketing organization that do have the same responsibilities and the same pain points, but you can't define it simply by their title. In the consumer world, if you're selling, if you're selling Pepsi, or if you're, you know, uh, uh, selling cars, it's real, you know, housewives from 34 to 50 or males from 18 to 25, you're, you, you've got a broad spectrum to choose from, but the B2B world is far more narrow and focused and you have to understand what it is that makes them think the way they do and what's going to make them act. So you need to compile details about what their problems are that your solution or your product is designed to solve for them. What are their points of view, right? Um, what are their behaviors? How do they act? What, are, what, what makes them work within their business? What makes them succeed? What makes them not succeed? When and how do they make decisions? Do they, you know, are they making decisions because something's on fire? Are they making decisions because they're planning in advance? What, what's the mindset of your buyer? And when you, when you take this effort to personalize that journey of the buyer, the aggregated buyer, what you're doing is you're reinforcing internally that fact that there are individual people that are buying your product. It's not a demo. It's not a collective group of people. It's not a target market. There are individuals that are thinking about this and they are talking about this and they are trying to figure out whether to spend their money to buy what you have to sell. So how do you create them? There's a pretty simple process uh, that you can go through. You gotta talk to them. I think that's been mentioned a couple of times. JP, I think I know where your idea came from. On, I remember that, some of that. Interviewing, interviewing your customers, interviewing the stakeholders, researching the marketplace. Um, that all leads you to developing the buyer personas that you're going to utilize within your business. And the buyer personas get to be combined with what we call the buyer journey. And the buyer journey, if you, you can look at it a lot of different ways. We tend to break it down into like four, four phases. You have awareness, you have evaluation, uh, you have, oh, I'm forgetting the third. What's the third, Tyson? research, evaluation, and decision. So each buyer may be present at different phases of that journey, finance or procurement. They're usually present in the decision-making phase, right? They may not be, they don't care about the awareness, they're not making decisions, but they're probably very prevalent in that last phase where you're making the decision to spend money, right? So the sources of where you can get this information I put six things on here that I think are going to be helpful for everybody that we boil it down to. In the top four, it doesn't matter how big your company is or how small your company is. It doesn't matter how complicated your sales cycle is or how simple your sales cycle is. Those are pieces that I think any business can, can utilize, right? The first one is interviewing your prospective buyers and your customers. JP talked about that. Talk to the people that already know you. What did they like about you? Why did they buy your product? This isn't about features and specifications. I think the B2B space specifically, um, boy, you can really look at the technology space has relied historically on, my product does this. It's, it's, it's a narcissistic view, right? I'm awesome, I have this great product and we do all these great things. It's like, they don't care. What they wanna know is how that applies to what they have to accomplish and what's gonna make their job more successful, and what's gonna make their boss happy with the investment they made. Those are the things that you need to think about to get in the mind of the buyer. So you have to interview not only your current customers and understand why they bought your, your product, but your prospective buyers. People that aren't even in the, the 
you know, you know, in the viewpoint right now of, of having experienced your product or your solution. You have to get inside what are they considering? What are they thinking about? And one quick uh, tip about this space that I think is really relevant. Whenever you're having customer interactions, um, there's a couple of really simple tips that I think are valuable for anybody to keep in mind. One is that their time is very valuable. If you ever get the chance to spend time with your buyers and your customers, they are doing you a huge favor first, right? So respect their time. The best ways to do that are to be face-to-face -face, if at all possible, not phone calls. If you have to do it over the phone, that's, that's understandable. But the other simple rule that we try to follow is have two people. And the reason you have two people is because you get, you hear different things, right? You're gonna hear different inputs and different perspectives from people when you hear the conversation from two directions. The other thing, if you're face to face, it allows one person to ask questions and do an awful lot of listening. It allows another person to actually take note of all that stuff rather than this disjointed, oh, hang on, what did you say? What you? Like, and it lets it be really efficient and really concise and it lets you get through it and respect their time and actually get a whole lot of great feedback out of it. That's a great source of information. Um, your sales teams. Whoever is selling the product, they understand where they didn't sell something, right? What broke? What did they not like? Where did it fall apart? Where did they lose confidence? But where did they close? What did they close? Uh, how did they close a really hard deal? What pushed them over the edge? What was meaningful to those buyers? Your sales guys should know that. If they show up and say, well, he said he wanted some servers, so I sold him some servers. That's ridiculous. That doesn't mean anything, right? Why was he buying them? Oh, they're doing an expansion of their business in this market. And that's information that will help you understand why they were trying to buy the product, right? Um, talking to your customer support department. We talked about post-sale. Um, after they buy your solution, what are they struggling with? What do they not like? What do they feel oversold about? What are they not? Those are things that help complete the experience and can make you stronger in how you produce content for your clients going forward, for your prospective buyers. Um, reviewing win-loss reports. We all know when we, want, we win some and we lose some, right? Why? And we're not all really diligent about it, right? It's, it, it, um, ideally, that's what a great CRM solution can do, right? You can capture a lot of that information, but a lot of that's also gonna come from the sales guys and making sure that they explain to you, where did this go south? Where did we win this? And then you can get a picture of what people are thinking, right? So the last two, like I said, are a little bit, they're not, you know, they're a little bit more subjective, but I think they're incredibly valuable. The social media one, I think some people feel uncomfortable with, but there's really, really simple ways to monitor social media. I think in the B2B space, you know, LinkedIn and, and Quora are a couple of great tools, and LinkedIn is, is a phenomenal resource for forums, you know. People, people proactively join groups and they talk about, I'm having this problem. You can seek those out and you can listen about, boy, there's a whole lot of people that are talking about a problem that resonates with my solution and I can get an independent fly in the wall perspective of what it is they're struggling with and, and are we even thinking about that in how we communicate to them, right? Um, you get more advanced, you can get community management, you can have active engagement over Twitter. How are your, how are your prospective buyers engaging with the market and how are they absorbing, uh, how are they uh, 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 receiving communications, et cetera. And the final is campaign data, right? You know, if you are utilizing a marketing automation solution, that's what they're there for. Who's downloading your information? What, where are they consuming it? What emails are they opening? Where are they landing on your website? You can, you can aggregate all that to get a kind of, a pretty good view of who it is that is seeking you out and what information they're trying to collect. So, the things you need to know, in short, what motivates this buyer to be doing what they're doing? Why are they looking at these solutions? You know, is it, uh, we need to save more money, we need to be more efficient, what, you know, what's their motivation? Um, what does success look like after they buy it? Right, after they buy your product, what's gonna make it work? for them. Not for you, but for them. What is going to make them successful? Uh, what are the disqualifiers, right? What, what's the stuff that blows up the sale? Is it budget? Is it, uh, is it their perception of, of, a, of an issue that doesn't potentially exist that you need to get around and, and provide more information about? Um, communication channels, how do they receive information? Video, right? We, that was touched on phenomenally. People, a lot of people like video. That's how they want to receive it. That's how they want to assess and evaluate and think about 
their, their buying decisions. Um, their roles in the buying journey, right? We talked about how different people have a different role. The procurement and the accounting team have a very limited role. Their role is to hold everybody else accountable for the money they spend. But if your buyers exist in the IT space, they might be responsible for generating awareness and evaluating the decisions, but they may, you know what? They may not have a say in the final decision. People have different phases and different roles in the, in the journey. Um, and finally, all of that stuff helps you create a prescription for what content you want to create. You know, anybody can create information, but the better you understand the psychology behind your buyer and you create your buyer personas as to these are the types of people that are looking for our solutions, the, the more focused the content you put to them can, can be. Whether it's videos that help instruct them through um, how-to guides on the product, whether it's uh, creating more focused email messaging to them. Whatever it might be, it helps you immensely from your prescription uh, for, your, for your content strategy. So, I mentioned earlier all this stuff led to, you add them all up and it creates a content map. I apologize for the small size, it didn't scale as well, but you can get this afterwards if you like. Um, on, on the top you have basically you your alignment of buyer personas, right? Where do they align? And on the side, you have the phases of, uh, um, of the process, of the buyer journey. The types of buyer and where they fall and the, um, the phases of consideration on the journey, right? And as you can see, like I said, finance, they're down here. Marketing might be involved. These, this is for us. This is something that we utilize. We, we do a lot with marketing. We do a lot with IT. And what this does is all that information you collected, what's in these boxes are the questions you ask them. Right? It's so the questions that help form the content you provide to them. You know, on the finance side, what's our anticipated return on investment? You need to answer that question so the guy here understands how to do his job and how it relates to the success of this sale in his eyes, not yours. Right? Um, on the sales side, the awareness. Now, why are our sales cycles getting longer? We got to figure out a better way to do this. That's the that's the problem. That's the question they're trying to resolve as they engage with you from the start, right? So understanding this matrix of concepts helps you define where your personas are. And it's when you break it down into these elements, it's a pretty simple process to go through, but like I said, it's an important process to think about the right way. And it's not about thinking through the product from your perspective and how you want people to buy stuff, it's understanding their perspective and why they're there to begin with. So, that's it. We do have uh, on our website, we've created a brief, it's called The Art of Buyer Personas and all of this stuff is in there plus prescriptive guidance as to how to do it. We have other uh, content that is really prescriptive about how to think about this and do this in more detail. You're welcome to download it from the site and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.